Okay, let's see. I got more sketchbooks coming this week. I was running out. Well, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna that, bring little that little tablet, tablet down. down. Uh, I thought you so bought you that for you. On that. I did, I but did, I did. I thought you bought that for you. I'm picking up picking some up feedback, feedback from you, though, too. That's weird, because on my headset... Yeah, it was yeah, like the old feedback that we used to get where I could hear myself a second after I hear it for, un, you know, like a second delay. I'm definitely blaming that on Twitch because it keeps giving me notifications that i um, broadcasting and it's like, no I'm not. Every time I try to broadcast, you disconnect me. I muted my TV to see if that helps. Because for some reason... Because even with the, the headphones, it still plays my TV sound. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think well, I don't I think, think it's your TV because I can hear it like right in my earpiece. So I don't know if it's one of my settings that I can hear. Um... Can you hear me, like, double on the stream? Like, if I can talk, hear you. Can you hear me talk again after? Um, yes. It's like triple. Okay, yeah, because that's what I was worried about, that I was going to start doing that. Oh, now it went away. Well, it hasn't disconnected me yet, so let's fire it up and see what happens. Okay. If anybody, if anybody watching, watching, if you're getting that feedback that I can hear, I apologize. I don't know how to get rid of that. Cal and I have learned to live with it. Uh, are you watching your stream? Because if you are, you might want to mute it. Uh, I, it's muted. I, I have it up on the uh, laptop so that I can see the chat and I can kind of see when I get disconnected because I don't always notice that bar disappearing from the Xbox. But it seems, seems to be pretty, pretty solid, solid so far. I mean... This is probably it's the probably first the I've first gotten in without being disconnected. disconnected. Probably jinxed myself right there. So how far did you get in the remake? Oh... I think here... I, I believe... well... It's hard to say because they've added a bunch of new stuff. Um... But I believe I've got... To right before they drop Sector 7. Spoilers to the drop sector set. Okay, this looks like a good, uh... Looks like it's holding on. Oh, I spoke too soon. Oh wait, maybe it's not. It looked like it was gonna disconnect, and I was gonna call shenanigans. you had to fight in the game, the rest of it was just cinematic.
That would drive me nuts. I hate games that overly cinematic. Yeah. That seems to be the hard part, is they don't... Like, this is a good level of, uh... Um, RPG and, uh... Cinema. You know, it gets a little heavy once you get out of Midgar and you get uh, Clouds and Tifa's backstory. Um, but, it, I mean, that's the biggest part where it kind of feels like it's just dragging on for story and you're not really doing anything. Yeah. At least as far as I felt. Uh, I think I found the call pretty... Did you? Oh, uh, yeah, the devil. I was watching you on the Xbox, and I think it was coming through my headphone and into the mic. So I'm gonna well, watch it's, you. Uh... Yeah, cause now I can now I don't hear it. Yeah, I'm gonna watch you on the tablet. Way to go, Xbox. Seriously. <laughs> right. Well, I I can still hear it a little bit, but I don't know. I think it's gonna be one of those problems that it, it, we never figure out where it's coming from because we've been dealing with this since we first we first started playing Destiny. That was driving me crazy. I was like, what? You know, I've I've played this game countless times. I I, I couldn't tell you exactly how many times I've played it, but it's a lot. And I never used to get into a fight right here. I used to be able to go almost all the way to the reactor without running into any bad guys, and then I started playing on the Xbox, and I get in a fight in this spot every single time. I purposely would spawn the fights because I, I, it would mean level up. So, uh, we'll, you, we'll, we're going to come to a spot like that, which I'm going to have to mess with the video editing software to cut that part out because it's going to probably literally be. A half an hour to an hour of just fighting. <laughs> I found a good spot to grind out some levels, and I, I do it every time. We did that yesterday for DBO. The art showed us this uh, unending spot if you do it right in the King's Forest. Yeah. And I jumped like two levels, which is hard because when you reincarnate your characters in DDO, it takes even more XP, and I'm on like my 10th life with her, you know, because I'm trying to do class completionist, so it takes a lot more XP to get those levels, and we just kept boosting them, and my, I'm playing a cleric right now in Kalari's life, and she has arcane fire abilities, and it was just a lot of fun. But we, we spent like a good two hours just repetitively killing a drow and drow zombies. That's cool. If you're playing the game, like if you've uh, never played it seven before, there's a little tunnel right here that takes you to a phoenix down. You should need it, but it is kind of a nice pickup early on in the game. I don't know if I got that in my playthrough. I went exploring as much as I could. Like I said, it's not really necessary. You won't, uh, you won't find yourself in dire need of it. But if I don't have to buy it, I'd rather find it. Yeah, I have to start my game back up again soon. I just, I took a break because that roller coaster thing is irking me. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see how they uh, reference that in the remake. But it'll be a couple years before we get to that part. I always try to catch Jesse at this part, but the inevitable fight always happens and that takes the momentum right out of you. software they use to bring this over so that you can play it on your PlayStation or your Xbox or your Switch uh, looks a lot cleaner than the original PlayStation version does. Um, in the original PlayStation version, you can't see, like when Cloud was riding in the elevator, uh, you can see his mouth. In the PS1 version and in the PlayStation uh, Vita version, 
can't. It's the old graphics. They're just too blocky to see. Yeah. And uh, it, it looks really pixelated. <laughs> um, but this one looks a lot cleaner. Uh, I saw somebody playing online where they actually had, I think it was a PC version of the game, where they actually had, like, they, the characters outside the lights look like this. And I just thought that was kind of neat, because I was like, that's all I really wanted them, if they could have just released that, looking a little bit cleaner, and I'd been happy. I like the way they were let's be honest, it, it feels more like a game that we play now. Yeah, I mean, and they've added, and the fact that they got everybody from the original, like the people that work on this game work, are working on that game, uh, is just fantastic to me, because it's not like, oh, hey, we're going to have so-and-so go through and remake what this other guy did, and they can apply their own vision to it. No, you get the exact same people that are like, hey, you know what, we can add all this stuff that we wanted to add in the first one, but now we actually get a chance to add it in this one. Which is what's making me nervous about the game I'm looking forward to in two years, which is what we'll hear from now. Because a lot of the originals have gone now, and Dragon's Age 4 has a chance to be really amazing or really sucky. And I watched yeah. the interviews for the Final Fantasy Remake, and they were saying, you know, we're getting older. You know, a lot of us are up there in almost retirement age, and we wanted to do this before we were all gone. I mean, they even got right. the original composers for the music and stuff. That is freaking neat. And like yeah, I said, and that's, yeah, that, that's the cool part about it is that everybody that was involved in this one is involved in the new one. And hopefully they'll get to finish it. And we have the unique perspective of, yeah, we have, we remember games when they were literally 8-bit, and we can go back and play those games that have the nostalgia. But sometimes it's just odd the way video games look now compared to when we were kids because, I mean, I literally, my first cut in my teeth in video games is Pong. I literally yeah. got hours of it and bouncing a little dot back between two stick lines. And that was video game entertainment, and now oh, look at where we are, it's, it's freaking amazing. And I remember yeah, when well, this game a... was cutting edge. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago that the, well, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago in, in actuality. <laughs> I, I'm quite a bit older than I feel. Uh, and that's the, that's the weird part about it. I don't know if it's uh, the gaming genre itself that moves forward so quickly you just don't notice it. Or if it's just life in general that... I mean, I would I, I the first time I plug, I plug this in to play it. You know, I can... I remember the house I was living at. I remember the setup I had set up because now I'm gaming in my room. You know, I, I've got... Uh, I don't want to use that then. Yeah. Uh, during this part here, and I never understood this, and I always attacked while his tail was up. <laughs> I never understood. I was like, he's telling me to attack with while his tail is up, but yet I still get counterattacked with the laser. And I was like, no, stupid, you're misreading the sentence. He means if you attack while his tail's up, it's gonna counterattack with his laser. So <laughs> I was a little stupid. Uh. Back at the house I used to live at, when I. I didn't have a, a TV in my room. We had just a little 13-inch TV. Uh, that there was a NCR pop broke off, and we had still had the TV to it. And then we had an old TV stand that didn't have a base for it. It was just a wheeled cart. And what I did is I took the top part of the broken uh, stand and I put it across the, the gap for that cart. And I put the 13-inch TV on it, and then I put my, um, I think it was my N64 at the time, and my PlayStation on the bottom of the cart, so I could wheel it from one side of the room to the other side of the room, because every so often I folks would want to rearrange the living room. And, uh, I eventually ended up just in one corner next to the door. Uh, we had a little, uh, piece of wall that jetted out that we would set stuff on, like, okay, we went, got, went out and got the mail, just set it on the counter here. Uh, 
but I finally just kind of like took over that little section. Uh, and I remember playing Mega Man Legends on it, I remember playing uh, Final Fantasy 7 on it, Final Fantasy 9. Uh, and it was cool because while I was on that little TV, I could still turn my head to the right and I could look back and watch regular TV while I was playing. So I was like, hey, I got my own little entertainment set up here, and if I wanted something, I could just be like, hey, Mark, can I get some Kool Aid? <laughs> I think it was video games weren't allowed in our bedrooms until I got my first Game Boy, which I was shocked they got it for me, but they I kept my grades good, and, you know, I did fight with monsters over the actual Nintendo when they first got it that, yes, I'm that old. Y'all, I had the original Nintendo. I still have it, because unlike my sisters, I keep stuff nice. And, um, yeah, when I got that Game Boy, I was shocked, because it was finally, I could play video games in my room. It was all mine. I didn't have to share it with anybody, you know, and I was like, those two can fight over nin Nintendo all they want. I've got my Game Boy. It was just oh, yeah. so amazing. Yeah, I don't think people realize, I mean, yeah, you had handheld games back then, but they were all that LCD screen, little black pixels on it, and, it, you know, they were yeah. fun for what they were. But, uh, I mean, I could play, she got me, Ruby was one of the first games on there that they got me, and uh, then this weird 2 Billions game, and then finally I got The Legend of Zelda, uh, Awakening, the one with the wind fish, and I yeah, just spent yes. hours, you know, because I would get all my homework done, and then I would be on that thing. Yeah, Link's Awakening was fantastic. You remember when they came out and had Link's Awakening, and because with the Game Boy, the original, which I don't know, the people that are going to be watching this, I don't know if they'll remember the original Game Boy. It was like a brick. Yeah, and I still had, have mine. I think, Oh, you still have it? I still have it. Oh, we're gonna have to hook this up because I still got an original Tetris. I, I, I still have I, all my consoles in their box. I mean, the back is missing. So you put batteries back there, they're gonna get hot, but I still oh, have God. everything. We, we can go on eBay and find you a bag for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be put that son of a gun right up. I have my Game Boy Advance. I have just about every console from Nintendo except my Wii because, you know, I've been with that and my mom, so. Yeah. Uh, but that's the like, like the, I remember, I remember we got, I, and I think my folks got us all uh, Game Boys. So if you can imagine the price tag that one they had on it for our boys. Yeah. Uh, everybody got a Game Boy. And, they and those things were so cool. Oh, yeah, and what were they? Weren't they like 50 to 100 bucks? Yeah, they were expensive back then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, well, I and mean, now we went like out trying to find them. Dust, dust, dust. No, we're talking about the early uh, 90s, 80s, probably, for some of us. Yeah. That was a lot of money back then. Oh yeah, that was a lot of money, and you didn't get like... 50, 50 bucks now gets you uh, a video game. And yeah. not even the whole game. That's just part of a game that that somebody decided to, to put out. Or whatever. If you're lucky, you'll get the whole game. Uh, and this was not a lit uh, screen either. <laughs> this, yeah, was the, this was something you had to play in the light. Uh, yep. And hope that you didn't lose light. You know, eventually they did come out with little portable lights for it, but all that did was drain the batteries more. Uh, no color, dark green on top of light green. Um, and then they came out with the Game Boy Color, which blew my mind because I was just like, oh, it's in color now, we can actually see it, but still not a lit screen. Yeah. I think the best Game Boy that that's my favorite, that if I could get one brand new, I would still purchase it. Uh, was the SP that folded up on itself. Yeah, I think Ty had one of those. I, I opted for the Game Boy uh, Advance. Yeah. And I don't regret it. I still have it. It's somewhere in one of the boxes, too. But I, I think I would have went for the SP if I had a thought about it. But by then, I was, you know, uh, 
young adult, as I call this, the video games kind of took a backseat to work for a bit. And, you know, my friends were trying to get me heavily into PC gaming, and then PC gaming became my life for a long time again. And it wasn't until we started really seriously talking as friends that I got back in the consoles again, because I was heavily PC. I mean, we met in the PC game, you know. So I, I, I was completely committed to playing everything, MMOs and stuff. And now I'm trying to find that bridge and the guys give me grief because I now play the uh, your uh your audio went out, Kale. Last I heard was guys giving me grief, and now I hear nothing. Either Cal's having a technical trouble, or she just disappeared. I forgot if the controller goes or not, that I uh, did drop. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, not, yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. I always fight these guys because I hate them. I don't blame them. It's a well, little bit of XP. And they drop stuff sometimes. I like getting that one thing where you can take stuff off them. Uh, steel. Yeah. Yeah, which, uh... I don't know how far in I'm gonna go today. If we get to the part where I grind out some bubbles, that that usually brings me pretty good because it's just one. It's basically the same fight over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And it's just like, uh. <laughs> And if you ever get into a fight where uh, it won't work in this one because there's guys on each side, but if you ever get into a fight where it's like a back attack like this, where it's just those two guys, at the start of the battle, you press and hold with the left bumper and the right bumper and you try to escape that, uh, and it'll flip you around so they don't get the benefit of hitting you in the back. They reinvented Scooby-Doo again. It's like every generation is gonna have their version of this freaking show. I liked Scooby-Doo when I was like really, really young. And then I got older and I tried watching it with my son and I was like, I really hate this show. I really well, do the like it. They, they keep trying to reinvent the same thing and it's like, you can't. It was good for what it was and every time they do a reinvention of it. They they put in that stuff like it, was like it wasn't a thing. Like like in the in the movie, there was like I'm tired of being the damsel in distress. It's like that was never a thing. Like nobody ever was like, well, looks like Daphne's gonna get kidnapped again. That wasn't yeah, I don't remember a thing. That them just being kind of, kidnapped. Yeah. yeah, that just kind of happened. You know, and then they make jokes out of it, like the the fact that after a while they all just uh, stop getting along. Like that was people doing that. You know, that was people putting their viewpoints in on it, causing that kind of feedback to to happen with it. So I don't understand why that why does that get to be canon just because that was our viewpoint on it. I think the Ventures did the best, <laughs> honestly. Oh God, yeah, that was. I love Doc Cameron and those take on it. And maybe that it's just I'm cynical, but it feels like every generation is going to get their version of the Scooby Gang, and it's like... <sighs> no, I other was kind of excited about like the, the new one because they, were, they put the Blue Falcon in. And I was like, well, that's a hero that nobody has really done anything with lately. So, you know, that's old Hanna-Barbera, you know, kind of a Batman knockoff. And I was really, like, yeah, it's kind of interesting to see what they would do with this. And all they did is they basically put Batman in a uh, Blue Falcon armor. 
like if you I look really closely at, at the face for the poster, I haven't seen any video on it, so I don't know if he acts like Batman or not, but it looks like Batman just attached like a blue falcon helmet to his uh, cape and cowl. I think the best two old school retro relaunches is Space Goes Coast to Coast and Harvey Birdman is Those were yeah, the best I love two. Space Ghost Coast. I, I really wish they would have kept that as a serious, like, late show interview talk show I would still watch that because I, the, I thought that would be neat Just, I love you know, this stars get interviewed by a cartoon character yeah. <laughs> Adult Swift needs more shows like the Brack show but that, that's the problem it relaunches though there, there are so many misses to the hits I gotta get caught up on Rick and Morty too. I've been avoiding like all the review channels so I don't get spoilers. I'm like season or two behind now. But well, I'm just so tired of the way people season. hyped it. Yeah, they're just in season three or four now. Four. And four, yeah. Watched... They're just in season four and I think I don't think season four is actually done yet. I think we watched three together, didn't we? Yeah, but well, every time the series hits Blu-ray, I buy it, and then we watch the digital copy usually together. Um, and I haven't seen 4 come out yet. As soon as 4 comes out, it's going to be like, hey, let's watch Rick and Morty from season 1 right through to the, this new season. You can see how... I've got the good things on it. <laughs> you can see how my eyes widened when he was like, hey, let's watch <laughs> Oh my goodness. Because I don't think you people know, when Greg gets this kick, we literally watch the stuff, like, back to back. Like we did with the Venture Brothers to get caught up, and I have a feeling we'll be doing that again when they do their, their next season. Well, yeah, but it's, the bad part is, it's never, uh... Our team network uh, needs to give them a serious contract. They are their longest running show, and they consistently put out good stuff. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, what was it, uh, uh, the co-creator of Rick and Morty, he went to, uh, Hulu with another show that's Rick and Morty-esque, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, and it's like, if places like Hulu and Netflix and stuff offer them money, I'm sure the guys that did Venture Brothers are going to be like, hey, we're not under contract, these guys are willing to give us a contract and some money so that we can say, hey, yeah, we can do another two or three seasons, definitely. You know, and I can't blame them if they take it, because I'd be tired of this crap myself. It's like, they've got storylines that we could have the ends to if they would just say, yeah, here's another, here's funding for the five years. And, and they've got, like, um, I, season seven left me going, I can't finish like this. I need to, I need to answer these questions. Right. They have laid a nice crippin trail for our fans to like, what's gonna happen next? Yep. Yeah, you know, not to give away any spoilers, but they are really branching out the whole backstory for the Monarch and Dr. Venture now. And I would love to see them be able to continue it. Right. And they haven't neglected the boys. You're actually seeing Hank and Dean you know, get older, mature, and it's it's pretty nice. And you know, Brock's back, so that makes me happy. Because I hate this kind of weird thing. Like I used to go, I used to go this way and go right into the the train graveyard, and I I try to run some levels right there, but it's kind of hit or miss for guys. And you can never go this way. I still don't know what's down there. Yeah. I'm gonna jump up here to get this. I am looking at the design lab for controllers. I don't think I'm gonna get a custom controller though, because I like the one you gave me. It's got yeah. a skull on it. <laughs> well, that's the. You know, I, I, I've got two of them from the, the design lab, and it's, honestly, it's a bit expensive for what you would actually need. Oh, um, no. I would, be, I would be happier if they would actually take in. Uh, sell replacement batteries for the controllers because I've had to buy those off-brand ones that you have to take the cover off the back in order for them to fit. Yeah. There's the infamous pillar. 
<laughs> oh, it was pouring out. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna take out the trap. I'm waiting for Amazon to ping me that the stuff I ordered came in and it's like I'm not going out and it is monsooning outside my house right now. Right. And it's been heavy rain since last night, so it probably looks yeah, like so a they said there were supposed to be uh, flood warnings and stuff uh, for the next couple of uh, next couple of days. Well, yesterday and today. Now this guy here, uh, he gets more of a fleshed out story um, in the remake too. I thought that was kind of neat. They just took a side character and Cloud actually yeah. threatens to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I think they got a chance in the remake to explore things that they were limited because of, you know, people realize that a lot of these games took a lot of space and didn't have things like terabytes back then. To get to a megabyte was a big deal. You know, once again, we, and he hates what I say, but we olds remember how, you know, games like this would come in multiple discs because they literally didn't have storage devices like they do now. There was no, like, digital gaming back then. You know, if you had said right. to, like, a teen Greg or a teen 10, you know, yeah, you can get them on digital, like, what the fuck's that? I mean, we lived in a time before cell phones, people. I used to have an actual pager. My mom had got us pagers and would have us carry change because sometimes, you know, when she was at work, she wanted to make sure we could call her. And I haven't seen, like, a pay, pay phone. And I know they still have them in some places, but I haven't seen a pay, pay phone in years. And they used to be so common, especially in New York. Has anybody else noticed the child rearing the stake in this particular scene? <laughs> yeah. He's got her on his shoulder, but he's also holding her with the gun arm. There is, Bear what has he, a lot What if he of sneezes and that, and that goes off? I mean, he had her help in ten a bar, so I mean... He's not yeah, gonna that be is the other part of <laughs> that is the bad part uh, about this is after this scene here where they get to go to the next area. She's like, oh, Marlene's going to run the bar. I was like, you're going to let an underage kid ten bar? Yep. And this scene is fleshed out quite a bit more in uh, in the remake, too, because I, uh, I did get past this a little bit. We're almost caught up to where I'm actually at in the in the. I mean, you laugh about that, but a lot of families run their businesses like that. Like I said, growing up in New York, we lived in a neighborhood that most of the shop owners lived either above or right next to their shop. So it was nothing like the family liquor store to have us in there working because, hey, cheap labor. And I know right. the people who owned the grocery store had their kids working in there. And it was just the way we did things. So that's why like I know the, a lot about different liquors. In the remake, you can mess around with the jukebox, you can change the music. There's a nice. dartboard right here with, where these picture frames are that you can actually try to get first place in. Um, which, believe it or not, Wedge actually owns the, uh, the, the top leader spot on that when you start playing it. <laughs> but I like, they, they even fleshed out this little scene here where they're talking about uh, the bombs and how it uh, was a bigger explosion than she thought. But look at that guy on the TV. <laughs> that does not look right. He looks like one of those, uh, he looks like Guido oh, from Star Wars. Yeah. Only flesh color. I 
of beyond the spirit kind of got me there as my first bird us. Yeah. I think they toned him down a little bit, but he does still, he is still that kind of, uh, He just tossed the guy. <laughs> like, the thing dude. I like about this is, this is all very reminiscent of, uh, and I guess technically, this would be the first one that did it. Uh, where they set up the rooms and stuff like this, but it's very Mario RPG looking. Uh, and I wish they'd, they'd re-release that. If nothing else, just do like the virtual console on the Switch, because they have Super Nintendo emulators on there that you can get. But for whatever the reason, they just will not put uh, Super Mario RPG on there, and I don't understand why. It's probably the most requested game for them to re-release, and they just won't do it. Nintendo's very stubborn. They really are. They have so many dedicated gamers. Like, I, I watched a really good review on Sword of Shield, and I do agree with a lot of their harsh criticism of it, because this is not a new game series, and there's so much they could do to keep long-term players of all ages engaged and interested. And they just keep dropping the ball with it. And I'm hoping, since I was one of the dum-dums who blindly just got uh, Isla Armor and Crown of Tundra, because, you know, hey, I had the money at the time. I'm hoping that it's not a disappointment, but I'm tempering myself for it. You know, it's coming out next month. It's my birthday next month. You know, the kid and I have plans to try to play through it, and hopefully we'll like it. But they could have done way better with their series, and they could bring back so many retro games onto the Switch, like you say, and make money hand over fist, but they have, like, this policy of not listening to gamers, and it's worked for them so far, but I just don't understand their, their logic with it, because I think they could be doing way better. You know? Yeah, they, they definitely could, and I mean, it's not saying that you have to do everything that your gamers recommend and everything. And I know they're probably like, well, if we listen to them and we do this, then we got to pay that person, like, royalties or whatever. But it's just like, don't don't worry about Like, put them on retainer. You know, actually offer them, like, a... It doesn't have to be a sizable retainer, but, I mean, anybody would love to be able to put on their resume that, yeah, I worked for Nintendo for a little bit, you know? My thing is, I still think that they could make an actual, especially with Switch capabilities, if they fix a lot of the issues with Sword and Shield grouping, because that's a nightmare. I, I don't know, I, I, I've dealt with clunky MMOs before, it's one of my nitpicks Destiny also. I don't understand how people are making games with multiplayer capabilities and still not get in that you need a dedicated server so that people can actually see and interact with each other. Because trying to fill a group, even with somebody you're friends with, in Sony Shield is a freaking nightmare still, and I don't understand that. It, it's like they took something that worked in the 3DS, because I play X and Y, I can still connect to people in my Pokemon uh, Y game with no issues. And that game is like, yeah. what, seven years old? But yeah. Sword and Shield, with the Switch's capabilities, just you and I trying to get into the same raid den was a nightmare for a bit. And don't get us started the whole, on the trade. That's the whole uh, the problem on there. It's like, finding the same raid, that wasn't too bad. You know, say, hey, I'm doing this, and you can broadcast it, and somebody can find it. It's easier but to getting, do it like, local. If you wanted to, if you wanted to camp together, I can never find your tent to go camping. No, and we were sitting right next to each other when we tried yeah. that too. And I was like, like seriously? And th don't even get us started when you actually connect to the internet and you see other sprites just doing the impossible because they glitch out. Right. It, and this is just like I, I would love for a Pokemon MMO, but I don't want Game Freak ones to do it. Because they've proven that multi-online multi playing is just not their strong suit. And here we have Underage Kid heading bar. Yep. But 
So I'm telling you, back in the olden days, especially in, in our country, back in the West, too, that would have been a shock. Now, I usually go through the, uh, the explanation of how material is used. Uh, I'm gonna skip it. Uh, just Clouds simply because being there's... Well, at what you do with each character affects what happens in Gold Sauce for later. And there is a achievement to get. Barrett. Um, <laughs> yeah, to go on a date with Barrett, which I have not done. Uh, mainly because I think that's just weird. <laughs> but I will eventually do it just simply to get that achievement. Um, oh, wait, I got it. Preparing for the part where we're going to grind out some levels here, what you want to do is we don't have to buy a lot, but we do have to buy kind of smart. So, I'm going to buy that because we don't want to get fire anywhere else for a bit. Phoenix down. I'm going to buy one more just so that there's one for everybody. We don't need any antidotes because by the time we get done, we're going to have so many antidotes that we'll never need to buy one. <laughs> and then we want to buy... That's what I said. Today was a really good day that if you want to uh, take a nap, like this would be the day to do it. And it's really hard not to want to just lay down and take a nap. <laughs> I know. I've been staring at my black pieces for a bit now. It's like, I don't even know what to do. So I'm scrolling through like the game section, Xbox, and watching you. This rain has got me like a cat. Creeper my butt. <laughs> wow. This went from G-rated to whatever the heck she wanted to do with butt. <laughs> okay, so what I usually end up doing is to spread the material out a little bit better is I will take lightning off of Cloud because Barrett, and then I'll put all of it, uh, which we'll get right up here. And it's good to come up here just to get that all material because when you attach it to a conjoined slot like this, when I go to cast lightning, it'll cast on everybody. And depending on the level, as you can see, it's got five stars on the bottom. I can do it once. As it levels up, I'll be able to do it twice. Once it gets all the way maxed out, you'll be able to do it as many times as you want. But that lets you attack instead of just one person with lightning. You can attack however many enemies are on the field. Um, I do believe it costs a bit more. I am not going to talk to any of these other guys, they, they just kind of give you hints on the game and how to play. Uh, I already know how to do pretty much everything in here, at least somewhat well. Uh, so I literally just came in here for that uh, item. Uh, and we just want to go up here. There's a spot 
uh, in, I believe, Sector 6 that I get confused with that topic. Um, as you're playing the game, there's little signs, like this little sign poster that there's nothing on it, but there's little signs posted throughout the game for Turtle Paradise. This is Johnny's parents here. have to read them as you play through. Um, but there's a few of them that once you pass it, you can't get back to them. So I believe that is the one at well, the one in Sector 6 I believe you can get back to, but there's one in the Shinra building that you cannot once you're once you go in to rescue Aerith. You have to go in the front door. Uh, you can try to catch it on the way back out. I usually uh, go in the front door and then I take the stairs just to, just to be confusing. I like this part because I don't know if they, did they stab each other or did they just punch each other and they both passed out. get to Yuffie's hometown, if you've read all the Turtle Paradise posters, you get uh, some items from that. And they're, and they're, it's good to just, you know, all you gotta do is read a poster and you get an item. Might as well do it. Yeah, free loot is free loot. Yep. I like how he like, runs around to the camera and like, I'm not talking to this guy, I don't want to go back because I think he's ignoring me. It's complicated. <laughs> you gonna shoot him with your fingers? <laughs> All aboard the intimidation train. <laughs> Finish the rest of the suit before I got started. Oh, no, that's okay. Oh, there's Johnny right there. This guy is walking toward us. We gotta come back because he looks like this. I'm not sure what he took, but uh. Ha <laughs> 
they be about to strip them down? because Twitch is finally staying connected. <laughs> okay, so we're supposed to go straight ahead. But we're not. We're going to go this way. And it's a few tunnels, so... Actually, I want to make sure I got everything set up right. Because once we get in there, we can't come out. Well, we can, but then we have to start all over. So... Out of that tunnel, and there's the number 16 again. I think we should find our way around out here. Every section of the river looks the same. I'm not sure. Now, if there was more than, if there were more than three of these guys, I would have used lightning just down the pipe quicker because they slow you down. I'm just curling up. You start snoring, I'm gonna like, keep snorting. <laughs> I'm not gonna start snoring. Cause then I can just turn on YouTube. <laughs> okay, everybody, so listen, to, listen to Cal snore, she took down a whole rainforest. You're terrible. Now you see why I get nervous when you're like, I should come over and sleep. Nope. This is what I well, got no, I, would, I, I would, I would sleep, trust me, I snore too, I'm not saying that I don't, but I get really, but I have to get, like, like, if I, I have to be really, really tired to sleep. Uh, normally I don't. Uh, and here we're just gonna do this just to make this fight a little bit faster. I hate to use it up because I don't want to, having the, the ability to do this actually helps with the grinding later on, but I don't want to sit here and fight these guys for 20 minutes. There's two different types of ways that your limit breaks. Uh, one, 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 eight. Uh, and I'll get into the menus in a second here. I'll explain it. I go. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get closer down the tunnels here. I'll just do it right here because I think the next one. So if you go down to limit and select the character, it doesn't matter who, you have set and check. So check will tell you what that limit break does. And this is just a tax my opponent. If you set, it's to set the level of limit breaker. So as we unlock a limit, a limit breaker from level two, therefore we can, you know, if we if we unlock level two right now, we can just go ahead and switch it to level two. But there's a second part to each level. There's limit breaks under each one except for number four. Number four you have to find while you're playing the game and then you just attach it to the character. Uh, the way the limit breakers level up though, the first one on each level is by usage. So the more the more we use Braver the, the faster that second limit break will come out get the limit break for level 2, though, is the more characters that character actually KOs or kills, that will unlock that one. So what you'll actually see here is by the time I'm done playing, I'll probably have the limit, uh, level 2s for everybody uh, unlocked. Because uh, I usually go from and here you usually go level 8 or 9, depending on how, many, how much grinding you did earlier. 
I'll be level 22 by the time we leave. Or around there, depending on how far I want to go. But you just run up to these guys, they'll run out, you fight them, and then once the fight's over, they'll say, hey, we should leave, just hit stay, and they'll just keep loading these three guys. And for the first part, um, I put the healing uh, material on Tifa, so she's going to be the medic in the party for right now. Um, Barret except lightning. Cloud is usually the stronger people in this window when you start the game with them. Uh, I believe you can do about 69 or 70 damage to these guys to actually take them out. So the lightning kind of helps. Uh, if you manage to do it, I, I hit the button so fast, I just kind of know whoever's going to attack is going to attack. Um, but if you can get Barrett to attack the guy in the back, there, he doesn't get any advantage from being on the back row because he's using the range of weapon. And we'll get about 84 experience. And every so often these guys will carry an antidote. So we'll just hit stay here. What you want to be careful of is when you guys level up, as you can see, all their, even though Barrett's the only one actually using the, the Matera, everybody's dropped a little bit from the how they want, which I thought was kind of, uh, they, they should have it if, if you're leveling up, it stays consistent and full. And we'll have a bunch of money by the time this is done, too. <laughs> And I try not to heal until we get to about a hundred HP left. It's crazy that even in like a dystopian setting, like the world goes no You know. So that makes that battle it's just like they made a reward like you get experience and you get money and it's like you're mugging people <laughs> yeah. I love the way they just, did hey, that. hey guys we uh we randomly and, and honestly they probably do it in uh Pokemon too it's like hey when two challengers eyes meet they have to have a battle and it's like yeah and if you lose I'm taking your money <laughs> I love the Legend of Neo. Scrag ended up getting me the box out of that because they do funny about the whole, you know, when you tell the poplins and stuff and, and where those heart cookies come from and the money. <laughs> the rupees. We gamers, we all know that. We ganky people for their food. But we I have this. this how many, how many, yeah, because I never thought about it until just now, it's like, yeah, that's probably what's happening there, like, before the body disappears, because in the, uh, remake, you actually get to see them, like, there's that effect of them joining the live stream, wow. uh, and then the body just kind of goes away, uh, and here they just kind of fade out, which I te technically, I guess, is the same thing. Yeah. Uh, except when they don't want it to, I've noticed that, too, it's like, except when they don't want it to. I don't want to use all of their attack to get ready, I probably should. What kind of glass I don't like, I don't like, I don't like Keith's limit break, it's too, like, the whole lottery aspect of it. Uh, it's a play on slots, yeah. I think that's what it is, it's not so much that I don't mind the limit break, is as just the randomness of it. Not so much in the beginning, because you, you can kind of... You can better uh, gauge where you can make it land so you do enough damage. Uh, so much so as at the end, because every limit break is done the same way almost. So by the time you get to the end, if you want to hit a critical hit on all the, on the guys, it becomes a lot harder. 
this ungrateful that the bodies decay in most video games. I think it would be bad, especially when I'm playing for my like this girl who hand up rogue and rangers in, in some of the MMOs to just be standing on the pile of us all in it. Is there a time where I just hold this work? That's the one thing I like about Dragon Age, because you know, when you get into a fight, you're Inquisitor, even if you win, they're covered in blood, they're covered in, you know, stuff that you can tell, yeah, they were just in a fight. And it was another game where we actually lost pieces of your clothing and armor as you fought. And it felt realistic, but the game was so jerky and weird, you couldn't really get into it. Plus, you know, every time my female fighter fought, it was like, hey, I gotta be careful. They hit, like, my chest area, but it took out the hour. I don't like this. That's how she won all of her fights at <laughs> But I do think eventually they're gonna get games with more, you know, realistically. If you're in a, a heavy battle, your armor and clothing are gonna take damage. Yeah, I don't mind some games like that, like, uh, Breath of the Wild. I don't mind that every so often your equipment breaks. I just hate it when it's just like, uh... There's some games where it's like, yeah, okay, I don't need that kind of realism. Yeah. Uh, like in, uh, like, like, like in the Legend of Zelda thing, like the, in the Breath of the Wild, the Master Sword eventually is power that I have to be for music. Uh, and all the other games, that's never an issue. Because I always thought yeah. that it was just power to do power. I, I know that the Master Sword's powerful enough, but it's a chosen one. I don't think just anybody can wield that sword. Because it was just helping him focus his power. Not that it, it was powerful of, itself. It's kind of a little bit of both. It has its own power. Stuff was apparently in Skyward Sword, they they cover that because that's one of the one of your little helpers in that game as far as from what I've been able to read up on it actually becomes the Master Sword and it was a uh, almost like a mini goddess. Um, and uh, her becoming the Master Sword then deals you with that ability to destroy you. Now the cool thing about Link is when he wields it, he gets the benefit of all the experience of everyone who's ever wielded the sword. So he actually has like everybody that's ever fought Ganon. He has he, he has the uh, benefit of learning from them how to fight. It's just all his previous incarnations, so yeah. But that's still that's you know. But from uh, it kind of answers the question of like how could like if you use uh, Ocarina of Time, like, okay, how could a, a kid from the forest know how to fight uh, a, a wizard from the desert like that? Well, it's like this is how because you know, even though technically it's only the second game in the series, the first game you take out the, the god of chaos. So it's like yeah, of course you're gonna have extra experience and stuff. I decided long ago to not, you know, get my head too deep into the tr the canon of where the game's played. Because I right. still, like, if I'm supposed to believe that the game that I really grew up on is the final of the series, there's just still too many open-ended things with the way they ended that. So I'm like, no, Nintendo's known for saying something canon and changing it, so I'm just going to enjoy the game as they come out. Well, I, think, uh, I, 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 I think they changed it a little bit with Breath of the Wild coming out. I think Breath of the Wild is the latest incarnation of it. Um, Any game series that doesn't end with a wedding game like Zelda, I disavow anyway. 
I'm just saying. Yeah, well, yeah, no, that's... And that's the whole thing, like, everybody flipped out when they came out with Linkle. And yeah. I think the name needs a, a different... They definitely yeah. need to do a different name on that. But I was like, as far as the character goes, I was like, have that be uh, Link and Zelda's daughter. And have her have both pieces of the Triforce. I would just love the game where I get to play it as a Zelda. Yeah, because they kind of had a game for that for the uh, Game Boy. Uh, I was hoping for yeah, a little while to come out with that. You know, the guy oh, or girl to want to play Link can, and if we wanted to start the game with Zelda, we could go to her journey, and that would be really amazing. I always thought it'd be kind of fun to have something happen where everybody gets their five horses switched. Yeah. Like, uh, something yeah, happens. Link ends up with the Triforce of Power, or uh, the Triforce of, Triforce of Wisdom, Zelda ends up with the Triforce of Courage, or something. <laughs> or mean, just everybody powerful. switch one to the left. Yeah, she's powerful just with the Triforce of Wisdom. You've seen it as she, you know, learn her training as she. And it's like, there's just right. so much to her character that could be fun. Especially for girls like me who are like, I work for Zelda. And her legend is Zelda. Oh, no, no. Link's the hero. She gets to help everyone. Yeah, the train game is called. Yeah. yeah. Hourglass. Uh, of that was hope. kind of. Yeah. Uh, Phantom or uh, Spirit Tracks was kind of nice because you actually had that happen where uh, they reference. Like, hey, you grab the line that, you know, you guys do, you know, you, you help out my ancestors, and your, your ancestors help out my ancestors all the time, so you need to free up the game of uh, I, I think that the, I kind of figure out a way for the controller not to turn it off from what I use. Right. Uh, but yeah, you say. I wasn't uh, the person that was, like, basically in front of the game, but they were like, oh, you're going to help them this time. Possess uh, animated pieces of armor and actually help out. I got the idea there. Believe in that, I mean, I just like the game where it's. You can still play as Link if you want, but there's an option to play as Zelda. And just go through all the stuff she goes through. Because as much as I like adventuring, I was into what was going on in Hyrule politics too, but she had to do that dual life. Where she was secretly warrior training with Impa, and yet having to learn how to rule as the heir to the high ruling throne. And I was like, that's a game a lot of us would play. You know, not just females, well, there's be... plenty of males who would play it too. My thing is, just, like, there's an actual, like, you could make a game based off of, like, you're, like, you're gonna start out as Link. Like you're doing all the stuff that you're supposed to do, you're getting ready to go on your adventure, and then all of a sudden Ganon just takes him out, like prisons him in a crystal, and be like, not this time. I was like, we've done this enough for you. Every time you foil my plots, and this time I'm gonna, I'm, I'm taking you off the board right now, and then have Zelda have to go around and save him for a change. You know, I think that'd be kind of a neat little twist on it. They just keep dropping the ball. And like, there are plenty of games where you can play from different perspectives. It's one of the reasons I am still such a fangirl for Inquisition. Literally, depending on the race you play, depending on the agenda you play, the game is vastly different. But human to me is the easy button of the game, because you're basically like royalty or really well known if you play if you in that game world. And it's like, I don't want to do it. And I like elves, I always tend to play elves, but I mean, you can play Kunari, you can play Dwarf, you can play, uh, I think there's, I think there's only four main races in this game, but still, it, it, I like how when you do the different things that you get, different stories, different outcomes, different reactions, and I think that's what a lot of these Nintendo games are lacking, because even with the Pokemon series, I always play a female trainer. Uh, obviously, but 
but it's not really that much different when you play uh, as a female in those games as it is for a male. With the exception of the Let's Go, because I know I think you said that guy didn't creep on you the way they crept up on character. In, in, in that, I think it was a million city or something. I think there's certain that you see say something creepy to the girl trainers over the guys. I, a lot of games drop the ball when it comes to those different perspectives and how the game treats it and interacts with you when you're a bit different than what they consider the norm. Right now. now I'm not saying they have to be all gross like the real girl, but I just think that like if you look at my trainer and, and Sword and Shield, I purposely tried to make her best representative of how I would look at that age. I mean, literal hair and all, that was how I pretty much was as a 10 year old, except my hair was a bit more wild. Because whenever my mom tried to style it, I was like, nope, I'm gonna let it blood it loose to be everywhere. Right. But that's how 10 year old 10 would have been if she was a Pokemon trainer. And I've traded cards with all around the world, and I've yet to find another. I, uh, I had to starve to death because, uh, when the 10 year old me, I was like, okay, go out and do what you're supposed to do, I would have no I think your Pokemon would have taken care of you. You would have had a Lucario, I think I and it would not have. I think I would have eaten my Pokemon. No. I'd have been like, hey, anybody want some Charizard riblets? That's terrible. You would have found the real blue, salad? and you would have been fine. Well, yeah, I gotta have somebody to crash it down and, and eat, you know. I'm surprised they haven't done that in the game theory yet. I mean, I, I get why they wouldn't, because they a horrific thought. But... No, they show that there are certain edible Pokemon. I mean, they talk about once and Barracuda being good for, like, Shishimi and stuff, so... And the Pokemon world is well known that the Pokemon are edible, which is... I, I just, like I said, gave me I don't want to think about it. Right. You don't think for the party. Don't think about it. But it, it is funny because I, I think I would have been. I think I would have taken the Pokemon training if it was in the real world. Just because I would have found the wrong. Because you make fun of me for this, but I swear. In the wild area, I was just minding my business, and that little Ralt ran up to me. And I was like, okay, it's meant to be. And that is I'm... why Queenie never <laughs> leaves my team. I am not saying that that's not happening. I, all I said was that it didn't happen the way that your brain is making it happen. She ran up to me! They do that, though. The program in the game will have them run up to you. But Ralts is a rare, especially, you know, just, <laughs> it wasn't on that one little weird island, it was in the general wild area. I'm telling you, you do I'm just gonna let you have this one, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna argue with you on it, I'm just gonna be like, but yeah, she, she saw you and was like, I just thought it was crazy because of all the Pokemon that I've loved over the years, especially so many moments of Ralts just it completely and shares the number one spot for me. So whenever I get one, I get excited. That was one of my big problems with Sun and Moon though. I couldn't immediately get my hands on the Ralts and I had to wait until I was able to open the natural deck. And it soured me. <laughs> So I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep uh, I'm gonna keep grinding away at this one. I'm gonna do it off screen. Okay. Uh, just so that I can get some lunch here. I'm starting to get a little grumbly in the tumbly. <laughs> Angry. Lately, yeah. <laughs> starting to get a little hunger. And it's gonna be like I said. You can see I'm up to level 11, 10, 11. Uh, I'm gonna go probably another 10 levels, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a grind. It's gonna be. Exactly
exactly what it says it is. Um, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna go ahead and lull me to sleep. <laughs> right. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the screen here after this fight. Um, I will start her back up once I get done so that we don't miss any of the game fight. But I'm gonna continue to grind on this probably for another hour or two. It depends on how long that actually takes. As they get stronger, the fights get faster. Gotta be twice as many fights to get a level, so it's kind of fun. The big thing. Yeah. While you're doing that one off stream, I might jump on a position and do a hush whispers really quick. Or that way it doesn't to, feed uh... after yours. Do you want me to stick on with you or do you want me to just get you again when I come back on? It's up to you. You can you can do it that way. I mean